do you like my rack? If you have a double or triple set of everything in order to climb El Capitan, but you don't know how to stick it in the rock, you're not gonna go up the rock. This video is how to place all of this different type of gear and whatever we don't cover in this will be in the Big Wall Bible, which is the bigger project to these videos. I'm also going to include in the video some of the brake tests along the way so you can know that you can trust certain placements and that you really shouldn't have too much gear fear. Until you get into the really small stuff, you can just get on it. So in case you don't know, if you put something in the rock that holds you without using a hammer, then it's considered clean climbing. So you have C1, C2, C3, and even C4, which is pretty damn hard. But if you have to use a hammer to smash it in, it is not clean climbing, and that's where the A1, 2, 3, 4, A5 come in. And that's where things could get spicy if you have to hammer aid. Now, as we get newer technology, we are able to do routes that required a hammer in the past without using the hammer. They call it the stove legs on the nose because they were literally smashing in stove legs in there. And now you can just use that guy. Now all the years that they were using a hammer did change the rock and you have these pods that are kind of awkward shaped. But now that we've got aliens and totems and other cams these days that have a great shape of a lobe, they're more narrow of a head, and they basically, they just fit really well. And we're gonna show you how to identify that in this video. Okay, this is completely busted. I literally just saw the fact that this thing's all bent up, meaning only two lobes are even pulling, which is a great segue to thank my patrons who do support what we're doing with $1 per episode on Patreon, because if a thousand people do that, I'm able to make content infinitely without worrying about the cost of it. Now, if you can't afford it or just don't wanna pay for it, that's the point. Don't worry about it. That's why it's free. If you can like and subscribe, I really appreciate that because that doesn't cost anything, but I want more people to learn big walling, how their gear breaks, and that's actually really bad, and learn that they can just trust the systems and focus on enjoying the climbing, the caving, the canyoning, whatever they're doing, right? But it feels a little weird to live on donations, so I am trying to be a real YouTuber and live off sponsorships, which brings me to another segue into Rocky Talkie. I should go get one of those. <laughs> Do I have enough, enough product placement there? Climbers invented a walkie-talkie that actually works when I need it to. Now don't click out of this, hear me out. I struggled a lot for two reasons. I didn't bring enough water, and I didn't have one of these. Water's mostly free. Now at noon every day on El Capitan, there is a lot of wind. And if you can't hear your partner and anything out of the ordinary happens, it's very difficult, difficult, it's very difficult to communicate anything unique to your belayer or your leader. These things are lightweight, the battery lasts a really long time, and they're super reliable, which I never had in the past and had many epics because of it. You know our new website I just released? Well, I spent like nine months working on it, and I didn't have time to keep working on that and make this course. And so they pay or finish paying for that project. You can hit several of the filters on our content page and filter out exactly what you want to see because the content I make isn't intended for everyone to enjoy. I just am bouncing around between the sports and it is nice to cross pollinate them, but I really appreciate them investing in the website and in this course, because I think it's gonna help a lot of people. Now let's start with my new favorite can, totems. Let me show you a totem. What's really cool about a totem, I'll show you how to place it in a second, is you only have to place two lobes and you can clip this and it'll hold body weight. And if you clip both, it'll hold full weight. Now it's not likely you want to do that if you're gonna clip your rope, which is what the sling is for. And you can clip this and if you want it to be shorter, you can clip that. And if you're trying to aid climb, you can clip up here to get yourself higher. So if I were to clip my rope, I'm going to want to put it lower or put a quick draw on it. And if I'm gonna be going at an angle, of course, I would add more of an extender. So that's how I would clip myself to this piece. But just know that totems are awesome because the shape of that lobe, the metal grabs the rock really well and it fits a more variety of places. So let me show you how that works is you don't cam it all the way to where the tips are past each other. Somewhere in that range is great. And if it goes here, awesome. You just put it in deep enough to do its job, but not so hard that you can't get your fingers on this trigger for the follower to take it out. 
Now, if you're scared, you might want to squeeze it too much. The lobes are crossed and it's gonna look like that, making it kind of harder for the follower to clean, especially if it rocks. You can see it's going up and there's no more movement for the cam to squeeze to get smaller to pull it out. Keep it in that sweet spot right there. And listen to this versus if I place this here, this rock could explode and uh, then the opening is too big for the cam to hold. If I do just go down here just a little bit more, I could, uh, if you see the lobes are not crossed, uh, but this is a solid rock and this is a solid rock. So be mindful of where you're placing it. Not all rock is created equal. If for some reason this is all I could get because it was a shallow placement, then I could clip this loop here and it would hold my body weight and then I could aid past this section. Oh, hey, there we go. One spring left. Wow, rest in peace. We're gonna test what one side can do. So it broke the cable where it meets the lobes. I'm pretty happy with that. Here's a yellow totem, or is similar to a gray alien. And you can see these finger pods uh, size crack. And you can see it changes from bigger to smaller, bigger to smaller. Now you don't want to place this where you're going to want your fingers. Now luckily I have a finger pod up here that I can lock off to. Uh, but if you're free climbing, of course you don't want to fill that in and then you have nowhere to put your hand. So right down here, I can place it and you can see just how beautiful of a spot that is because this rock is solid and this rock is solid. And what I like to do is I like to place these in a way that is almost treating them like a nut. So in this case, I go up and it goes in easily, but then when I pull it down, it kind of sits there beautifully. And if you try to squeeze it and pull it straight out, it doesn't come out. And cams can slip at, albeit higher forces. That's how it fails in the cam pressure most often in the lab. So this just gets me excited. And it's easy enough for my cleaner to squeeze, go up and then out. So in, down, bomber. And that's actually holding really well on these two lobes. These ones are moving quite a bit. Another thing that's a really good trick is to flip it upside down because you can see that these two lobes are on the inside. Sometimes just doing this will make it fit better. And if you wiggle it, you can see how they're kind of tipped out on the bottom and okay on the top. So the blue totem is a very common one. I actually carry three on my rack, uh, but black totem, blue totem, and gray, uh, yellow totem are the three very common piton sizes. Uh, one thing to kind of note is when you place them, their range is a little bit different than a C4, where you would typically go like to nose to 90 degrees, but these actually go a little bit at that point to a little bit wider, uh, but past that it starts being over camped. So this would be a perfect blue uh, totem placement. That's the size as it enters. I have to pull it in. Ooh, I, I would, would not even place, I would not bounce no. it. I would just clip it in and go. Yeah, it's, that's amazing. Um, if I sit this in a little bit more, you can see it sits a little bit wider, but that is still a good totem placement. This is a black totem placement. Up against the crack there, you can kind of see the size comparison. As I pull it, it is, oh, there it is. It's a little bit tight on a black totem, but it, that'll definitely hold really well. So some micro cams are some Black Diamond C3s. And they're called C3s because there's three lobes on each one. And also can be called TCUs, but Metolius has a cam called TCU, so it can be a little bit confusing. Either way, it has a much more narrow head that will allow to fit in some tinier cracks. Not every crack's perfectly parallel. Sometimes it's just like shaped into a pod. And if you have a wide micro cam, it's not gonna always fit. Now the plastic here doesn't allow it to bend great. And so the Z4s is a four lobe version now that has the same width, which is really great. But anyways, if you ever see these, this is what they are. Let's get into my crack here. So it doesn't quite fit while it's open, and so it fits like that. If it doesn't go in before it's expanded, there's a chance it'll hold. But I'll be at a small chance. That's actually a great placement I would get on I'd that whip. one. I'd whip. I no wouldn't problem. bounce test that very much before just committing to it. That's solid. In a horizontal placement, it 
fits right there just fine and it bends over the edge super good enough. Will this damage your cam? Probably, but hey, got you up the route. So the oh. wires straight up broke right on that edge. What are those? This is called culture. You have to know these exist just because they did. These are called link cams, or what I used to call them as oh shit cams. Because if this doesn't fit, you can go oh shit, and it just, it's a transformer cam. It just gets smaller, 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 smaller. Now they tend to walk. That means when they go like this, they'll go into the crack deeper and deeper. So uh, they're also expensive and pretty damn heavy. Do but they make them anymore? I don't think they make them anymore. They do not. Yeah. What's cool is also for math nerds, uh, it's the golden ratio. This is the golden ratio? Yep. For okay. those that are math nerds. All right. If you're a math nerd, this is the golden ratio. Whatever that means. Okay. That doesn't go in. You can just keep squeezing it and it will. Where I found these to shine is when I'm trying to climb the boot flake or something. I'll take two of similar sizes and because they overlap so much, I could just lift this up, sit on it, lift my um, aider up, stand on it, and just kind of ascend up the entire crack without ever having to go over the other cam, which smashes into the other one. It's very fast. They don't make them anymore, but you can find them fixed in cracks because they're so bad at getting stuck. So this is my absolute favorite piece of gear. This thing has caught me more times than any other piece of gear. This is finger pods for me, and this is a yellow alien. Aliens have a wonderful bend radius, and the shape and type of metal and everything just fits in Yosemite cracks where I climb the best. And bef this before the totems that came out, so now that's kind of like, uh, I don't know which one I like more now. But in the same placement as the blue totem, check it out. So if I touch the crack here, you can see that that just snugs right up in there doesn't move at all. Woohoo! Wood whip. Oh, clean cut that cable. 13.58. I don't think there's any wire left in there. This metal is a softer metal, right? That's what makes it grab the rock better. So an offset alien is where the thumb loop is one color, but the sling is another, meaning, and it's pretty hard to tell in the small one, that this side of these two lobes is gonna be smaller than these two lobes. And that's in case you have a piton scar, but not all cracks are parallel. So you can snuggle one side into a smaller part of the crack and this guy can sit on the bigger part of the crack. So you can see that the back lobes go in, but these lobes won't. But if I squeeze it and it gets more narrow in the back, I can go in and then slot it sideways a little, just like that. Now these inside lobes on this side are not gonna be able to come out of that. That's almost like a nut placement. And so that's very bomber, and it doesn't have a chance of slipping or anything. And the way this cable is, it sits over that edge quite nicely. So I would leave this in and clip that to my rope. So you can actually see on this bigger offset alien the difference between those lobes here. Now this is a red-yellow alien. However, there is gray in between the two, but so many piton scars, this fits really well in, putting the smaller lobe in the back of the piton. But then you have gray-red, and you have yellow-gray, and you just have a combination of a bunch of the different sizes because, well, they work really well. Now something we didn't place in the cracks was the Black Diamond C4s. And they're pretty awesome because of the double axle giving them quite a big range. And the double axle allows it to be placed passively, which I'm not quite sure how to get a stable placement like this, but at least we found out it's super strong when you do. And when we break these things in the drop tower, the cam shoots straight out of the crack. And they even have an ultralight version where this thumb loop is made out of Dyneema instead of a metal cable. Now those ultralights, kind of have an expiration date because Dyneema doesn't last forever. Um, not that anything lasts forever and the sling doesn't last forever, but you can re-sling this, but the Dyneema, you can't re-thumb loop it. Now they last five or 10 years, but I mean, half the cams I have on my rack right now are 15 years old. So uh, we're gonna find out how well they don't hold up in about 15, 20 years when they start to break on people. 
Anyways, this is one of the brands of the cams that I keep on my rack. I have the totems, the aliens, and these. Now keep in mind, if you squeeze this thing all the way and shove it in a crack, well, the only way to get it out is to squeeze it a little bit more. So try not to get those tips to cross at the end because that's called over camming. Doesn't mean it's unsafe. It just means your partner is going to like you less or you'll have less cams. Now here's a great example of how a cam can be placed in your home. I actually sent this picture to Andrea and said, hey, can you draw this for me? And I believe that was our first shirt with her designs on it. And then she added a climber climbing the cam and she also added it to leggings, which looks really cool. And so you can see all of that on HowNotToSwag.com. And I love El Capitan shirt. Now let's get into hooking. All right, so I've arrived at a small seam here and I could either try to put in a really small micro cam here or a small micro nut. But instead on aid climb, you're trying to move as fast as you can and you don't always need to have a bunch of pro. So what you can use is a cam hook to move through a section. So you wanna choose the right size cam hook for the crack here. We're gonna start with this medium size one and you can just put it in here. And when you pull down, what it does is it pivots. So this bottom part is pushing against the rock here. The top part is pushing that direction. So the bottom is pointing that way. The top is pointing that way. And then I can pull down on that. <laughs> on the gate. <laughs> <laughs> right there, like there. And it's gonna be plenty strong enough for weight placement. Uh, you would not really wanna take a whipper on it. No, not, no. not a bomber placement, but a bomber aid placement. This is something you would see in like C2 type of placements and terrain. Oh yeah, metals. Fuck. This might be up to try. That is not the shape it's supposed to be. So, huh, well, three to four. You could also place them inverted, straight up under a roof or in a horizontal crack. They flex a lot in this position and can feel pretty insecure at first. But when you get used to them, they're actually quite stable. As you weight the cam hook, it pushes outwards on either side of the crack, which locks it in place. Be careful not to use the smaller size inverted. It's much weaker than the others and will probably- It ain't easy hooking. In the valley, it's a little bit easier to be able to see terrain that you have a hook move coming up. But the idea is instead of having to put your hand on a hold and trying to crimp on a tiny little hold like this tiny crimper, like totally like single pad dude, I'm gonna use a uh, clip hanger here. And so what I wanna look at is these can kind of brace against the side. And that's what you kind of wanna look for is those aware marks on the rock from that over time people wearing it in. Um, but this pretty much just becomes a crimper for you. And you can just pull down. Now, one thing is it's really nice if you, uh, actually file the tips of these because it'll actually get a better placement if you file it at a 45 degree angle on the right and the left um, but you just pretty much place it on there and then you can weight it now this thing even if you duct tape it and leave it as pro um, you can do that but just keep in mind that it can only it'll start bending upwards and actually come off at about two kilonewtons which you definitely generate more uh, rocking your portal edge at night with your partner um, so not quite good enough to hold. <laughs> All right, so this is another type of placement I could use where it's a uh, small little flake in there um, and it's still doing the same job. You could still press on that and it's still gonna stabilize and press against that flake. Uh, when you're in flakes like this, you do wanna keep in mind that uh, it could actually still pry off flakes. So make sure you're doing it in good quality flakes if you're gonna be using them. In case you're curious what A4 looks like. <laughs> oh, it's opening. Still holding really well. What's what's it reading now? 2.32. Wow. 2.73 and it opened up. This is my big pecker that I love showing people. It's bent a little bit weird, but it still does the job. So the key is to slip it into a crack while nobody's noticing. And sometimes uh, this is a little bit too wide of a crack for this, but this is just a hand placement. So it could still be considered uh, a C1, C2 if it's a hand placement, if you don't need a hammer for it. Um, and this also does include a little soft tap with the hand. 
So if I did a little soft tap with the hand, I should still be able to get some weight on it. So I'm going to actually weight this piece. Let's see, ready? I'm waiting it, so it's spooky and I can hear it. Um, not a great placement and I would not really want to whip on this. And there is no need if the crack's this big, but this is just to show uh, if the crack was skinnier, this, this is how it works. So to get this thing out, you would need to kind of wiggle it to get it out. You hit, hit there or hit the bottom and just kind of hit up and up and kind of just like get it to wiggle. Uh, you don't want to hit down, obviously, because that would get the packer more deep. So you, you can, can also clip a sling here mm -hmm. and hammer out. And if you brought a hammer. Yeah, if you brought a hammer. Uh, other placements, though, you could get it into a uh, small little seam. Let's see if I can get a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and what this can end up kind of acting like is a little bit more of like a cam hook because it's not just straight. It can leverage and get some different twisting yeah. in it. So here's a piton and you can see how wide it is. And if anything's this big at this point, you're typically able to use some more recent technology. But sometimes you have a piton scar that you're able to utilize. And if you take a piton and you cut half of it off, then you have a sawed off piton. And a sawed off piton goes in the shape of the rock quite well because that's what caused it to look like this today. And these are super nice on the Zodiac. They just slot in super well. Hand placed. And uh, hand placed. I never even used a hammer when I placed this one. Sometimes it's nice to have different sizes or whatnot. You can see that this one is a number four. You can see that this one does not fit. These weightless aliens we carry now and the totems weigh nothing. Fred Becky bringing up 250 pitons out for some of the routes out in the Wind River range. Oh Crazy. my God. 250. Take a minute and realize that I have 72 pieces of gear on me right here. And it's not, ironically, all of my gear. And it doesn't even weigh like 20 pounds. It was such a feat for the original people to do the original things they originally did. Not just climbing, just anything in general, but like if you think of the climbers that pioneered this stuff for us and they took stove legs and they took 250 pitons, that's insane. And it's just nice to recognize that uh, what we're doing today is a lot easier. They didn't have YouTube, they didn't have ultralights, and they didn't have micro nuts. Like they didn't have these. They had to take beaks and blades and smash them into the thin cracks. Now we just put these in there, well, scars from doing that. Now let's show you how to play with your nuts. So this is a micro nut. Uh, it's actually called a RP oftentimes, these same ones. And it's a little bit uh, of a softer metal, so it's gonna get a better bite in the rock. As you can see, it's offset here too. Um, so it's kind of a different size throughout it. Yeah. Um, and these are really good for these micro seams. This one's rated for seven kilonewtons. Uh, leaving this guy behind, I have a lot of confidence placing it and then just stepping right on it, no problem. That is a good placement. Hopefully it's, uh, I can get that out. Super happy I got this out. A little hammering, a little nut tool. And it looks like we got a six kilonewton MBS and a nine kilonewton result. I'll show you a really small placement uh, if I can. So I'm looking for where this thing right here kind of uh, constricts really well. Um, so I can place that in there and then I like to seat it down. What I'm looking for in that is that I've got good uh, contact on both sides and that it's constricting as I pull it down and I'm still trying to pull it in the direction of pull. Um, notice that I am pulling and giving it some good tugs um, to seat it really well. What not to do is if you wiggle, 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 and saw it all the way back there, it's gonna be such a pain in the ass for the cleaner to get the nut tool in there. That's not coming out. If you are gonna go like that, that's definitely not gonna come out, but you try not to put it in too deep. So here's an example of too big of a nut placement that I could still get in that 
is that I could still get that in there. See how it's got contact on the left, it's got contact on the bottom, but where the meat, where the saddle is on that nut placement, um, it does not have contact in the top there. So if you pull out a little bit, it's gonna come out. All right, so this is an example of a super micro nut, and this thing is rated up to ki three kilonewtons, and as you saw in our heavy bounce test, even me, that's 145, 150 pounds without gear, I was still able to generate, what was it, 2.2 mm -hmm. kilonewtons on a really hard bounce test. You can actually almost blow these wires on a really hard bounce test. Um, and just cause I can get it in there like that, doesn't mean that that's mm -hmm. gonna hold that little tiny little placement. So just cause I can get it to get stuck by hand placing, it doesn't mean it's gonna be able to hold uh, actual weight when I ooh, ooh. pull on it. Oh. Yeah, this hole cracks a little too big for that, mm -hmm. but if it's not too big, you can trust this with body placement. We did actually brake test mm -hmm. these, and because it's welded at the top and it's not bent like this, you can, um, this weakens it. Technically, it always breaks, you know, more in this realm. Because it gets pinched down at the beaner. Yeah, bending the steel cable. I have blown a wire. Yep. Um, so just, you know, like this is ironically almost as strong as some of these. And a cam. <laughs> oh yeah, and they're all like stronger than a cam. This is a, a decent placement too. I just want to emphasize that depth does not mean always better. So those that are a little bit short, it's okay. Size doesn't always matter. Oh my God. Um, it's a matter about how you use it. So uh, it's got really good contact on both sides here and it's still constricting down. Um, and it would be definitely solid enough for a good placement. Now, <laughs> if you can get that out, yeah, I guess that's how you clean it. But yeah. here, check this out. This is the same width on both sides, okay? Um, and that's not an offset. That's just a nut. Um, I prefer offsets. Yep, I, I have usually a double set of offsets. So I'm gonna be placing a larger set of nuts here. Um, so there are two different ways you can place nuts in general, is you can place it in this orientation you can place it in this orientation, depending on where the swoop of the rock needs to be touching against the rock. Otherwise, sometimes that's not good enough, and instead you need to place it in this orientation. You can see how it also tapers down in that direction too. So, I can see that I've got a good taper here, so I can actually place this in here. Oh, and yeah. with a good tug here, I've got really good contact on the right side, I've got good contact on the left side, and I can even see up at the top, go ahead and look at the top there, that it also is, looks really well too. Yeah. So I like that placement, I would clip that. Now the thing with nuts is you wanna always be careful to not just clip it with a loose beaner because in order to get these things out, well all I have to often do is go upwards and it starts moving, right? And I might have to hit it. So what you would want to do oftentimes is attach a longer sling like an alpine to nuts to protect that swoop up as you're pulling up and clipping the next pieces. Um, I have oftentimes seen one of my nut placements drop once I got to about the age of 13. Oh, wow. Okay, so here's our next nut placement. Nine point six kilonewtons is interesting, and that the wire broke where the carabiner was. I just can't imagine that nut coming out of such a tight constriction, but I was imagining this to be stronger. So this is a nut tool. I seen how it's connected to me. I like it on some kind of spring. That where did I did you get that spring. So this is actually from Rocky Taki. Their springs are also really good, uh, versatile tools. Besides, for just the Taki themselves. Okay. So um, this is also inside of here. You can kind of see that there's metal. So it's not just like a plastic loop. There, there's metal wire inside, which is really nice. And then it just clips back to me. So it doesn't stay nice and long. It doesn't take up a lot of room on my harness, but then I don't have to worry about dropping these. So you can see that this is for, to be able to hook things like being able to grab trigger wires from your cams. Um, it's kind of got a, a little blunt force ability here. Um, I've also used this to like pry at pieces, especially like a side profile of a nut, you can get it inside the wires yeah. and then pry it like that, like a lever. Mm -hmm. And that oftentimes works. That's not gonna be what I use for this because I can't get to that yet. 
Um, there are some nut tools where the inside is actually a wrench where you can go up to a uh, old loose bolt and you can tighten it. This is not one of them. Um, but there are some that I've used where I can retighten a loose hanger, which is kind of nice. Tool. Yep. And then the top is oftentimes nice and flat and uh, um, big, so you can hit your hand and you're not trying to hit against this sharp metal. You get a little bit more blunt with that. And you can use things like carabiners, you can use things like uh, a piece of rock, your water bottle, anything to get you a little extra force to be able to hit it out. I've used my Alfifi before. Oh, wow. Yep, because that's a big metal chunk of metal I can hit. I've used my Grigri before. Oh. Like anything that's hard that's not my hand. Those micro fractures are a myth. Yeah, yep, <laughs> yep. So I'm gonna try to get this nut out. I think it's gonna be a little bit tricky. It's just the jabbing. That I'm not gonna be able to do like an easy hit out. Like you can't just like, oh, why is it not coming out? You really have to actually try a little bit. You actually have to hit it hard and try to move it in different orientations and it'll oftentimes come out. Just really jab at it. Otherwise use a hammer. Yep. If you're on an A2, A3, A1, and anything you brought a hammer for, sometimes don't forget you have a hammer to actually hit things you out hammer with. hammer it in, you gotta hammer it out. Yeah, so. <laughs> I have uh, used a nut tool as a hammer to essentially get one of my nuts so fixed that I was willing to let it be fixed forever because it was I needed a good placement to stay there, so I just took one of my copper R, uh, RPs, put it in there, and I pretty much mashed it in there good enough where it was fixed forever. Uh, and then it was able to hold my body weight, no problem. But you used a hammer with your nut tool. Nope, I just used my nut tool. Okay. Rivet hangers. So I'm gonna show you how to connect to a bolt that does not have a hanger that you can clip a carabiner to, is there's a couple of variety of wires that you can use. These are called rivet hangers. One side moves, so technically both sides move. And this kind of cinches up over a bolt stud. Now, a lot of the bolt studs are a hex bolt smashed into a hole. And so you have a head to go over, which is more secure than what I'm about to show you. Have you done this before though? What? On, with one without a bolt on it. 100% uh, because um, sometimes they're just quarter inch nubs that stick out. I think the Spire has one of these. It's just like, it's just a little rusty thing that you're like, really? Like this guy? Uh, yeah, take a look at this. Yeah. I didn't even see it. <laughs> so that's a good example of a scary rivet hanger, but it is pointed up and this is the only one I clip to. Uh, this I do not clip to, and that's what cinches up around it. So this is cinched up as much as it's going to. And I also have smaller ones. These come in a variety of size. So sometimes the bolt is so smashed in, there's not enough space behind it to get this size of a cable in there. So you do have to go with the smaller ones. Then to clean it, you typically will pull this down and then lift it up and over the bolt head. This is a bomber bolt stud without a nut. And I still would trust it because like, it's not gonna come off, especially if it's just body weight. But I'll typically leave these sometimes uh, for, uh, to protect me from a lead fall. So I've seen this on every route I've ever done. So um, it's nice to have a variety and it's nice not to have them all on one carabiner. This is one of the few things that I put in two different locations on a harness because if you drop them, you're, you're not gonna get past it if you've dropped all your options on how to connect it. This is a Moses hanger and you basically slip it over like a key notch. And uh, so- So you guys are gonna have somebody coming up Godzilla. Okay, that'll be fine. We should be done by the time they get up here. So this would go over the nut and then slip down behind. So just pretend there's a nut here, would go over that easily, and then has to slide behind. Now notice it's taking up quite a bit of space. It's not just the thickness of this metal, but it's also how much the rock is pushing it out. So if the nut's pushed back too far, or this is smashed in too far, this doesn't work. But once you have that, then you can take a carabiner and you can clip um, down like that and up. You want to make sure the spine is against the rock like any piton that you would be clipping. You don't want to clip this because it's levering it out and pushing weird against the carabiner. It just doesn't sit nat natural. There you go. How not to do that. What if you don't have any? You didn't expect to see any. Then you could use a nut. <sighs> what the? You might be able to hang from your nuts. So this cable makes a loop. Look familiar? 
go like that really feel nutty cinch it up there and you've got yourself a makeshift red hanger now the problem with this is this cable's pretty thick so you're not always going to have that space behind the nut the other thing is this is a lot taller and the rivet hangers are a lot shorter and what happens is it puts me this much further away from being able to stand up like that much more and every inch matters when you're playing with your nuts like that wasn't a good joke but every inch matters on how top step you can reach the next thing you want to get as high as you can and if this thing's hosing you by another three four inches well then you're short now the remainder of this video is going to show you how to place gear with a hammer and i just want you to know that we found a spot that no one's climbing at indicated by how much moss there is because it leaves scars so it's important that you know not to hammer in gear where there are routes that can go clean there are still plenty of routes that require hammers and so if you love smashing stuff go have at it uh, but just keep in mind that it leaves an impact when you do that and we can't just climb on this for hundreds of more years with hammers and not have consequences or new improvements of cams now as far as the difficulty goes there's kind of an overlap on the c1 2 and 3 or clean climbing to a2 3 4 there's like a1 is like you there is no a1 you just freaking use what i have here if you're on a1 but when i was climbing a3 i actually found it substantially easier than climbing c3 on the zodiac because when you smash in something, albeit if it's thin, it feels pretty solid. But then you eventually can only go so far in the clean climbing to where when you're getting into A4+, plus, then you're on such thin stuff that that hammer doesn't compensate for how sketchy it is. Now falling isn't really the risk in my mind when you are doing hard aid. It's what are the consequences if you fall. So if you're over a ledge, there's some pretty high consequences. Now, if you're doing C1, who cares? This is not gonna come out. You can leave gear that will hold you every three feet if you want. But when you get into the hard aid climbing, the gear that you're placing is only for body weight, barely. So if you do put something in, if you were to take a whipper on it, you'd rip it out. And so nothing's really holding you for quite a while, which is fine if you're not gonna hit anything. But if you're doing this over a ledge, you get some DFU pitches or don't F up. So on this 1A3 pitch I was climbing, it was going straight up and I knew everything I was placing wasn't gonna hold me and I didn't have any screamers or shock absorbers that I could attach to kind of like mitigate how much it was gonna put on the actual gear, which can help. But because I didn't have that and I didn't care because it was like overhanging, I wasn't gonna hit anything. I don't care if I'm gonna fall another 10 or 20, 30 feet if, if I'm not gonna hit anything. The more rope out is actually a softer catch. But I didn't want to unzip like 10 pieces in a row. So I'd have to like, what, replace them if I am going to go back up. So I have like the sketchiest bolt ladder ever that I left in the thing. And this only works if you're going straight up because my partner can just clean them. They're in front of his face. He's not going to miss them. He's not traversing, right, as he's ascending. And so I didn't clip any of them. So I left my last good double zero cam placement down there somewhere. And all the way up this thin part, I didn't, I didn't clip anything. And I felt like that was the right choice for that section to not rip them all out. But keep in mind, most stuff that you're smashing in is can be pretty solid. So you don't have to be too afraid of getting on it, but you just can't use a hammer anywhere you want. And I wanted to disclose that. Now, I would love to have lots of images on the Bolting Bible of gear that's placed in different ways or videos of even you placing pitons and heads in actual rock that you're actually climbing if you can ideally film don't know how you film that without fixing a pitch and having somebody film you top down but anyways if you guys want to contribute to what we're even showing you in this video because there's only so much we can cover in an hour uh, please do so and submit that on the Big Well Bible stuff. Think how awesome this resource is gonna be if we have a lot of different people contributing different ways to do this stuff based on different viewpoints and different opportunities they have to film things. Anyways, don't forget that you can get 10% off your Rocky Talkies. Let's go start smashing stuff. We're gonna show you how to place a piton. Clean routes nowadays uh, replace the use of these pitons because oftentimes we can get clean gear where we could get pitons before. Uh, so we're just going to show you how pitons could be placed, but again, 
if you can get clean gear in, you should be using clean gear and not pitons. So I've got two different placements. I'm gonna show you if I place this first one. That thing just seats in right away and it's already up against the, the collar. So I need to go up to a bigger one and you can see as I place it in there, it only goes in about uh, a third of the way. And what I wanna do is I wanna try to hit it and listen to the pings. So as I hit it here, Sound pretty much just stopped um and that's pretty awesome bomber i would whip on that any day uh you wouldn't clip to this though no no yeah, this is to keep it on the harness more conveniently yep so you can see there's about one finger width away from this eye and uh you can basically go up to the eye as long as you're hearing the pings yeah but if it bottoms out and you don't hear the high pitch ping then it's not bomber yes it caught it Jeremiah, how do you get it out? All right, so I'm gonna put a locker in, in the eyelet here. And I have what's called a funkness device. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be clipping it to the piton. The big key though is as you're removing any gear, you're never looking at it and trying to watch it. You wanna yeah. make sure to really shield, shield your eyes, otherwise you're gonna be having a sharp, uh, not sharp, but well, sort of pointy uh, metal object coming right at your face. So on the hammer, uh, it has a eyelet. That's what makes these a uh, special type of ha hammer. Also, this nose is going to be used for copperhead placements and stuff later. Um, but you have a hole that's clipped and a cable. Um, it doesn't actually have to be anything special. You can actually hand make these if you need to. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to wiggle this thing out by hitting this in the sides. So I can see that it's, it's wiggling. I like that. That's what I really want to see. That's what damages rocks. <laughs> and then I can clip it to it. You don't want to pull on the nose, though. There you go. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, just yeah. going to happen, whatever it is. So. Yeah. It's not good for your veners. Oh, can you smell that? You can smell the steel uh, sparking as it comes off uh, oftentimes. <laughs> Gosh, Crazy. that's sketchy. Uh, you want to bring up safety glasses? Um, I don't wear them. This is a Lost Arrow Piton. Totally looks like the Lost Arrow Spire. <laughs> or was the Lost Arrow Spire named after this? I think I the Lost Arrow Spire was named after us. <laughs> so the bigger Pitons are actually used a lot, lot less because of the technology we have today. But I found these to be um, pretty useful because sometimes stuff this thin is kind of hard to do clean. But what I have over here is a crack that is going to put, allow me to put it in about halfway. You can see that this is an extremely popular route. Get it, the joke? All of the moss. All the moss, okay. So. This is not an established route. Yeah, so. so this looks like a fingertip placement kind of a thing. And so what I'm gonna do is see if it goes in and it's about one third the way. So far, I like how that's going. So now. Yeah, that felt a lot better when I was putting it in. That's uh, pry in the rock? Yeah. Well, why is that? Because it's like an inch thick. <laughs> so there's my finger for scale. Something super interesting when we've tested pitons and cams in real rock is how much, how often the rocks fail. But notice we didn't hear the pings, the high pitch um, ping. So that's not quote unquote solid, but being orientated down, I would totally get on this thing. But it's definitely not a solid placement based on its sound. But let's say I don't want it in there. So I'm going to flip, why this? Because that's your beaner, I didn't want to fuck up mine again. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a brand new tiny Metolius. Um, basically these damage the uh, carabiners from just the funking and stuff. Now you're only getting, well no, you can get up to I think seven or eight kilonewtons on these things. 
but it does damage them. And because not only is it just the force that's on it, but sometimes it catches like right there and can really compromise it. I'm not gonna use this for life supporting stuff later. Back and forth, loosens it up. And you can see why we get pitone scars. Almost got it. Instant replay. <sighs> Like, pretend like you're trying to hit a nail in the sky. Yeah, it's so scary. <laughs> I don't wear eye protection either. Now, this is a knife blade because it's so thin. Uh, it's great for thin cracks. Check out how thin this crack is. And as I put it in there, uh, it barely wants to go in. But let's see here. This loops out here so I can clip this later. And I would sometimes put my, if I didn't want to drop anything, like a personal anchor or something in this, my spare one. Ready? That's pretty good. Pretty good. Pro tip, if you're hitting this way, you're not standing up high enough on your ladder. <laughs> it looks more like this. Make sure you open your mouth so you can taste the granite. I would clip that just the way it is. Spine on that side. When you clip pitons, you don't want to clip that way because the nose could get pushed up against the rock. The other thing I can do is pull on my funkness device as I hit it. The trick is not to fall down the hill. Oh, it's moving. Oh, it's still holding. Yes. Yes. What did we get, Bobby? 6.84. I just want to reemphasize, you don't always have to use pitons. That I would get on without hesitating. It's in there. It's touching the rock right here. It feels deep. It doesn't move when I wiggle it. And I don't know, I'm just stepping up to the next spot. Easier for my cleaner, takes less time. Does not damage the and rock. And it's clean climbing, which doesn't damage the rock as, as much, much as a piton does. Reps were originally designed to be hammered into hairline cracks. Since beaks were invented, the rope has become fairly redundant. However, they do still have an advantage over beaks in horizontal cracks. If the crack is too shallow for a knife blade or a beak, then try a rope. Push the rope into the crack and tap it in with your hammer. When you weight the rope, it will try to pivot in the crack, which holds it in place, in much the same way as any other piton. While ropes might be fairly okay in a horizontal crack, they're not as good in a vertical crack. In a vertical crack, the rope acts like a wedge, relying on the outward pressure from the sides of the crack. You'll have to hit it in fairly hard for it to be any good. Although there is a fine balance with this, because ropes are very delicate. As you weight the rope, it will either stay in place, or if you didn't hit it in hard enough, it will probably pivot around a constriction and fall out. If you hammer a rope in, but it bottoms out pretty soon, you could do a rep stack. This isn't too bomber. Let me show you my big pecker real quick. Uh, this is a Moses pecker and it's a right pecker. There's right, straight, and left. So you can see that this is straight and then it bends over so you can get the cord and the cable to not interfere with the side of the rock. Let me show you this. So if the pecker is gonna be smashed up against the wall, you wanna have a little room for this in order to do your thing. Now, now if I place it right here where it's thin, but gets tighter right here, I could, oh, work it in. And it stabilizes it right here. And if I gave that a little tap with my number five, that's technically clean climbing. <laughs> <laughs> but if I were to hammer it, cause I'd, I'd get on that. If I knew like I had some good stuff between me and a ledge, 
I'd get on that. And I'd bounce test it, right? But if you were a little scared, you do that and you're not going anywhere and that's not clean climbing, okay? Now, if I wanna get that out, I'm going to tap and then tap down here and then pull outward while I tap, pull outward while I tap and work it back out the way it was put in. Do you still need to use a fun funkness on it sometimes? If you can get a connection back here, you can funk or you can clip this and you can funk the bottom and then you can smash it in. You're basically having to open up the crack to get it in, which is just terrible. Another option I have is it goes no, no, and yes. It's already sitting on this, so it's only gonna go in more. Let's do that. That's actually pinging better than my other lost arrow. Yeah, hit it one more time. It is sounding way better. Um, it's a thin flake, but depending on which way you're standing on it, it's not prying it out this way. Not as it's much. It's going down much more. So yeah, it's yep. It's uh, less tapered, right? Yep. So now I could. I mean, that's not coming out. I'd, I'd fall on this. Yep. But to get it out, sucks for the follower. And make sure you have some sort of a clip in or something. So it, if it uh, comes out all of a sudden. Nope. Oops. And, oh, my pecker came out. Guess how you do a left one? Same way. So I'm gonna show how to do a copperhead placement. These are typically gonna be left there permanently. So you are pretty much fixing this very malleable nut into a wall that doesn't really oftentimes have a crack. Uh, and then these, these are gonna be left there a lot of time. You don't oftentimes try to clean these um, and you just leave them for the next party. There are means to be able to remove them, um, but they're pretty much destroyed once you do. Um, so this is called a copperhead. Actually, this one is a copperhead. And this is referred to it at the same, but it's obviously not copper, it's aluminum. Aluminum is better in granite um, and just has a better stickiness to it. And then there are all different sizes. You can do two crimps, you can do, you can do a three crimper. Um, there are sizes just like nuts too. So you do want to make sure to kind of match up with your size of your crack. There are some small, small ones as well as well as ones for horizontal placement. Usually you use these when there is nothing else that works. Um, and oftentimes where they blow is either they don't stick or the cable itself breaks. And what I often find is on a lot of trade routes in Yosemite that the head is actually in good condition, but about half the wires are blown off, which can be kind of spooky standing on top of. Um, when you blow that and all that's left is just the the sticky metal part on the wall, that's called a dead head. Oftentimes, if the cable breaks and this is still stuck under the wall, um, it is still gonna be stuck there, but remember that it's not stuck because of mechanical means and it's not stuck due to constrictions like a nut is, but instead friction actually. So it's very easy for these things to pop off if they're not placed well, but you could take a pecker and put it on top of this thing and balance on it. But keep in mind that this thing could leverage it and pop it off. If I was here and I had a seam that was like this, that would be a very similar scenario to where I see these type of placement, but I need a little bit more of like a little uh, divot in here, not necessarily a crack, but maybe a divot I could get this better in. Um, but this would be similar to a, a corner that you would see where you would have to use one of these. This is the placement that I'll be using right here, would be my placement. Now, again, I understand that I probably get some other pieces of pro in here, but I'm just gonna use it for an example. The first thing that I wanna do is I need to be able to clean this rock up. So I already tried to do my best with my brush to try to speed up this process, but you would try to clean this crack as best you can all in all around it here, clean it up. So, you know, I'm gonna take my, my fake brush right now and I would try to clean that up to try to get as best adhesion as possible. So it's to try to be as nice and clean. 
Then the next thing I need to do is I need to determine which side of this I need to use. Well, you can see at the bottom of the cable here, there is the wire side and then where it's pinched up there. I need the top to be facing like this, oh, there we go, like this and not like this. I do not want to do this placement. I want to be doing that placement. That's the type of placement I want. I want to have that wire sticking on the outside. The next thing is I, I want to try to make this nut look like that crack. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat this thing up. And heating it up by getting it malleable. I want to be really careful not to be hitting the wire right now. But I want to try to make this malleable. And I want to start kind of shaping it similar to what that crack looks like. So I can kind of see it's starting to kind of somewhat look like it. It's a little bit fat here. So I'm using the wall as like my... Uh, like anvil? Anvil, yep. All right. So I'm liking that. It's getting a little bit softer. There we go, so I'm liking that. It's getting a little bit better where I can start getting it to kind of fit that a little bit better. So I'm going to now try to drive it in there a little bit better. Careful not to try to hit my wire if I can. Let me see how it looks. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm using the nose of the hammer to start with. To kind of start. Now I'm gonna kind of finish it off using my actual chisels now too. So show me, show me, show me, how, how do you attach your chisel? Oh, so I did a uh, finishing knot here, mm -hmm. duct taped onto a piece of string up to my carabiner. Okay. You can buy a kit. I just made my own kit. Gotcha, so chisel time. Chisel time. So I'm gonna try to do a better job shaping now. Yeah. And I'm gonna go down to other sizes. That's why it's permanent. Yeah. <laughs> using a blunt chisels. I don't really want it to cut, I want it to mash. Mash and mangle. Sounds like a band name. Mash and mangle. It's a lot easier when a phone's in your way, right? All right, I think that's a okay placement. This is probably a two, one and a half star placement out of three. So for those that are pros, I'm still learning how to place a lot of these and needing more experience. So just letting you know. If you want to film yourself putting in a head. Uh, in your backyard. Yeah, not on a trade route or anything. Send it uh, to us on the How Not To Contribute page of the Big Wall Bible. And we'll include your beta as well. I hope to add a lot of people's information on the Big Wall Bible. Uh, I'm gonna try to funk this thing and I think I'm gonna try to break the cable. Ah, science. So I just want to show that I this can hold your weight. Um, so I am actually on an aid ladder right now. Yep, you Ooh, are top. on an aid ladder on a hill. Yep, top stepping this thing. So that's all it needs to be able to hold is just your weight. But again, it is pretty easy to get these things out. And the next party's weight, and the next party's weight, and yeah. the next party's weight. There we go. <laughs> get this thing out. Or else, yeah, I'll and that's, a, my... that's the other thing is you're trusting some random person you never met that they put this thing in there when you step on them. So just kind of be aware, you know, you have to assess them. But like I said, a lot of the ones I get on are the wires are all kinked out and rusted. The head placements so are good. Holy shit.
you can see that it really meld uh, to the what the rest of the crack kind of look like. Um, but that's all it was actually holding. It was just like friction welded to it. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. So on the back side, even though it looks mashed on that one side, it's it's only those points that mm -hmm. are touching it. You want to try to get as much uh, uh, yeah. contact as possible. So because there was an actual opening in the back, I couldn't get this to be in that. But yeah, yeah. That was probably under two k in. That would not have held a fall. No. But oftentimes these aren't going to, these just need to be able to hold your body weight. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes the copperheads are used for that reason. I want to know how much force I'm generating while I'm trying to remove a piton. 2.7 kilonewtons. Ah. Ooh, I got a 6.94.